Hello there! Welcome back to Gravy English, your go-to channel for everything about better English. I'm Chris and I've been teaching English as a spoken language and academic English for over 17 years. So, in the last video we talked about the pros, the best things about home-based online English teaching. So, in this video, we're going to talk about the cons of home-based online English teaching. Irregular or unstable income. Well, some companies may hire you as a regular employee, but for the most home-based online English teaching company that I've heard of, home-based teachers or tutors are hired as part-time or contractual. Your monthly pay would depend on a lot of factors including the status of the company and their management style, it's the rate per hour of teaching, the frequency of your teaching, the stability of your internet and uh, your, your power services, and lastly, the popularity or your marketability. So, I've heard of uh, some companies that usually pay Filipino workers 3 to $4 per hour of teaching, but actually, if you take a look, a closer look at their website, you will notice that they pay um, naturally born English or native speakers a much higher amount, usually from 10 even up to 20 two dollars per hour. You can also get a penalty or a salary cut because of class cancellations or tardiness. There are these companies which uh, charge as much as 40 peso for every minute that you are late and because things go wrong due to some technical difficulty or because schedule changes. Also, the salary varies from company to company and whether you are a newbie or a seasoned tutor or whether you have some certain certifications like the TFL or TESOL. And yes, of course, whether you are a native speaker or a non-native speaker. Also, it will depend on uh, the number of hours that the company would allow you to open on the website. And so, since you are actually paid for the actual number of hours that you teach, your salary would depend a lot on the performance of your internet connection and your power supply. So this job is very stressful. And yeah, it's going to be very hard if there's frequent power outage or internet outage in your area. Lastly, most companies leave it to you to advertise yourself to the students. I mean, there are these companies which hire hundreds of teachers, but actually they only have a small number or population of students. So teachers are forced to be more aggressive when they market themselves or they even give free trial classes so they can get new enrollments. Little or no opportunity for career growth or promotion. So again, because tutors are considered not regular employees, it is very common for the companies to give promotions or give new career opportunities for the tutors. Now, if the companies are startup, then usually the pioneering teachers may be given new jobs like trainers or managers, head teachers like that. But for the majority of tutors, usually they remain in the same position for years. While they may be given some uh, additional, little additional to their uh, base pay or they may be given some form of incentives or bonuses. No benefits or paid leaves. Now if you've been a regular employee and you wish to be in this business, don't expect that you'll get the same benefits that you enjoyed in the past. It's a business, you are not a regular employee, therefore you can get sick or you can go on vacation for as long as you want, but you'll have to accept that you'll receive no income. 
no real community. Now, this may not be true for all home-based online English teaching companies, but from my experience, teaching from home can get very lonely. I mean, after the interview and training, you are practically your own um, to, to do the lesson planning, to um, execute the lessons, and to solve problems with the student. But yes, yeah, some companies do have like annual or maybe uh, twice a year get together. But again, that's not true for all companies and uh, they don't even have a community or maybe a group for teachers um, where teachers can meet regularly and discuss about their classes. Discriminating like it or not, this industry discriminates on many levels. There is a discrimination existing between the native and the non-native speakers, the Filipino and the neutral accent speakers, as well as the females and the males. I already pointed out earlier, I mean, the big difference in the salary between the native speakers and the Filipino tutors. And also, yes, many companies are also partial to tutors with a more American or a standard accent. And I guess that's because the foreign students that these companies are catering to are also very discriminating. What I mean is most of them, they have this mindset that um, only the native speakers like the Americans, the Europeans or Canadians are fit to teach the English language, which is by the way, not true. Hmm. Most companies also prefer females over males. Well, I think the, the most logical reason for that is these students, especially the young ones, find the females maybe more approachable and understanding and so, you know, more fit to be a teacher or tutor. No consideration. Whether it's a technical difficulty or you had a family emergency, you definitely will get a ding for missing a minute of your class or missing the whole book schedule. It's because business is plain business and whole base online teaching is a business. Now, I do hear of some employees who would make an appeal or complain to their managers, but in the end, they eventually just give up because yes, managers would just ignore them. No security. Well, understandably, it's so easy to get kicked out of this business or this job because of poor internet connection or frequent power outages. Most companies, they are not lenient um, during these situations. It's probably because when you miss on a class, they also miss on their income. Now, some tutors, they are lucky just to get penalized for being late or for missing a class, but for others, yes, they may be unlucky because they will end up um, banned from opening some schedules or burst, um, fired, sometimes even without prior notice. So there you are, the seven cons when it comes to home-based online English teaching. Now, if you would compare um, the previous video and this video, it would seem that I have actually cited more cons than the pros, but don't let that discourage you. I've already mentioned I've been doing this for 17 years and so far I have no regrets. If, if you can only keep an open mind and consider that those cons are just challenges that you can easily overcome, then you can make this work. Like, for example, when it comes to, to pay, um, you just have to be uh, very careful with the company that you work for. Make sure that you know what you're worth and don't be afraid to negotiate your salary if you can. Um, also get to know the um, rules or the policies when it comes to penalties so that you can think of ways uh, with which you can avoid getting penalized and also adapt a more disciplined attitude when it comes to work like 
um, as much as possible, come to work or, or attend to your shift on time and file the proper leaves or properly inform your superiors if ever you are going on leave. When it comes to feeling lonely, you can actually join um, like social media groups or even just a small uh, group of teachers from your company. Um, within that group, you can actively communicate and share your own experiences or maybe ask questions um, to teachers about their problems in their classes. Also, you can um, maybe uh, invite teachers to go on a coffee or maybe a lunch date from time to time so you can actually meet each other in person. Uh, when it comes to benefits, you can actually set aside um, a certain part or amount of your salary to pay for your like social security um, benefits or some health benefits. Um, in fact, teachers in, in this business do not pay taxes not yet so you can use that certain amount to pay for your own health benefits and some form of insurance and lastly about discrimination you just have to accept the fact that you are not a native speaker but then you are teaching the english language so definitely there is no need to pretend like you're a native but you can always better yourself like you can work on reducing your tagalog or your visayan accent in my case i've trained in american accent for around six months or maybe even a year and i think that helped me a lot because students understand me easily the easier that you are understood by your student, the better for them because they learn easily as well. So always be proud of who you are. Be proud that you are a Filipino. I hope this video is worth your time. If you have other pros or cons in mind that I have maybe overlooked, please feel free to comment down below and I will be very happy to read about them. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!